Welcome everyone to this uh, new presentation for this uh, great conference we are having. Uh, the title for today is From Art to Science, the Evolution of Open Source Community Development. I have the pleasure to, to have done this research with Diane Mueller, uh, Director of Community Development at Red Hat Cloud Platform. And myself, Daniel Izquierdo, Director of Consulting at, at Victoria. You all should have access to this, to the paper, which is five pages that was published at IEEE Software. So thanks to Igor for uh, his invitation. Thank you all for for having us here. And with great pleasure, we we are sharing our research with you. Hello, everybody. This is Diane Mueller, and I really too want to reiterate thank you very much for having us here to share this information. If you know Red Hat at all, you know that open source is really the source of all the technology innovation that happens at Red Hat and at our customers and our partners and all of the other folks that collaborate with us. And though this slide is a little bit out of date, it's from 2018, the source of a lot of the work that we do is based in GitHub. You can follow the exponential growth of the GitHub repos and the projects in them, the kind of amazing massive ecosystems that are building up now. In 2018, it was 96 million repositories in GitHub. It's well over 125 million now. So from a community development perspective, managing the relationships, supporting these communities is really what we're touching on in this paper. So what we've seen um, and observed is the rise of what I call interrelated cloud native open source ecosystems. In the major one that, that I happen to play in right now as a community development person is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And this is a quick picture of their landscape. These are all the projects, products, technologies that are incorporated here. It is a crazy landscape. And what we've been trying to do is to tease out of that landscape one subset of it. And so as someone who manages multiple open source communities for Red Hat, what we've realized is that in the cloud native space, there are so many interdependencies. The primary project in CNCF is Kubernetes. OpenShift is a product offering that is a distribution, a value added distribution of Kubernetes. We have an open source distribution of Kubernetes, which we call OKD. We joke about it being the, a function of Kubernetes plus the things we add, but it is all open source. Even the product OpenShift is open source. And from that landscape, numerous of those projects that are listed in the landscape picture prior to this are also part of our um, ecosystem. So I, as a community person, need to be able to navigate all of these relationships. Previously, most people who were charged with supporting open source projects really focused on singular projects. So perhaps just Jaeger or um, Linux or one piece of the puzzle. And today, because of all the interdependencies and all the different pieces that we have to worry about that go into not just the engineers that are working on both projects or multiple projects, but the roadmaps, feature requests, release dates, all impact everything I do. With this exponential growth and the number of open source projects and the, their interrelatedness, we needed to do something different. And that's where the work that um, Bitergia and I um, have been doing together to help us um, navigate this to having to figure out how to apply some um, data analytics and data-driven data -driven approaches to um, this. So I'm going to let um, Daniel, describe a little bit in detail what we're doing here with this, what I call the jellyfish diagram. Thank you. And um, indeed, when, when we meant massive, we mean massive. So uh, just to bring some more context, uh, first time I met, had the pleasure to meet uh, Diane was in 2014 in, during some OpenStack summit. And there we started to discuss about uh, certain data needs that Diane had at that point in time. So as far as I remember at that point in time, OpenShift was around 200 developers, and it was kind of a self-contained community. Nowadays, as we can see here in the chart, uh, OpenShift, we, we see this is uh, located at the bottom left of the chart, while then the, we have the whole CNCF ecosystem. Each of the dots that you see in, in that chart are, are developers, and then they are around the same kind of star. I don't know if you, if you get to see the, the blue dot right in the middle. 
if those are working in the same project. If, if one of those developers uh, is working in more than one project, then we have those areas, for instance, between Kubernetes and OpenShift that are uh, kind of in the middle. And that means that they are working in Kubernetes, but they are working at the same time in, in OpenShift. By work, this means, in, in, in the case of this chart, it means that they, uh, they have produced at least uh, one piece of code, one commit, in, in both places for the for the time of this analysis. And then we have the whole CNCF ecosystem. And by the whole CNCF ecosystem, we mean um, uh, graduated projects and incubated projects at, at the point in time when we run when we run the analysis. So for this analysis, we, we use Grimoire Lab, which is a 100% open source tool. Um, and this is the way we are having this uh, data-driven approach. So we are growing from a community or, or or I need to manage, let's say, 200 people to the level of even close to two hand to uh, two levels, two to orders of magnitude. So that means that we are talking about a community of close to 10,000 people, and then we go for the whole landscape. Those are thousands of thousands of people working here and there. Um, a quick uh, architecture uh, briefing here. So we have on the left the data sources, and then Perceval is the main extraction tool. Everything is stored in Elasticsearch and, and Kibana. A key feature here is Sorting Hat, where we manage all of the identities for a given developer across all of the data sources, all of the projects, all of the CNCF ecosystem. Think, think for a while about the different identities that each of us may have in GitHub, in GitLab, IRC channels, mailing lists, et cetera. So all of them are different. So this tool is in charge of managing and administrating all of this. As well as doing as dealing with affiliations um, and affiliations over time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then at the end, at the, at the right side of the things, we we can see at the bottom right, uh, Kibiter, which is this downstream version with some extra capabilities as the network chart that they uh, we were defining before, and then the browser, which is basically the, the tool we are using to analyze this information. So this is this is Grimoire. Um, one of the great things about this identity merger piece is it really has helped us take all of the different data sources merge them in and be able to really identify who the participants are accurately in our uh, communities and where they overlap with other communities. For example, for Kubernetes alone, there are over 2,500 and something individual contributors. And those are just contributors. Those, not just, those don't include people who are end users. They don't include integrators. They don't include all of the other people in the uh, community. As we all know, community means more than just people who are putting code into the bucket. So what we've really tried to do is segment those out into some personas. The three key ones we talk about in the paper are tangential personas. These are people who are in multiple projects that are upstream to the project OKD, for example, that we need to be able to connect with when we have questions about features or release cycles and other things. Then there are sort of the community connector um, personalities finding those people who are leaders or at least um, have organizing roles in multiple communities so that when we have features that we want to get um, put into other projects or we have roadblocks that we need to deal with, we can find the, the right people or I can find them. And then newcomer personas, really um, some of the, the automation and the analysis about the longevity of how long people stay in communities, when they come in, when they enter using these tools from Vitergia and others um, to really help us um, identify these folks, figure out um, where they are connected to the project and how to nurture and support them. The other two key ones are identifying who are the project leads in some of the supporting um, roles, whether these are uh, special interest group leaders, actual engineering architectural leaders, or other kinds of leaders. And then the, the final one that's of interest to us in our community are organizational personas. How does an organization, like an end user organization of our offering, who are contributing to it, say someone like an Amadeus or one of the bigger customers, they also have people who are contributing. We're able to now see where those people who are contributing to our project, who are using our project, are also contributing to other projects so that we can know where where the ball is going. And these things you can't do without using some data-driven approach and data analytics approach. It became very clear early on that no company, including Red Hat or our customers or people who are collaborating with us is working on any just one thing. 
upstream coordination is very essential if you can imagine all of these different pieces and parts on different schedules not being managed well it would be pure chaos even with the tools it's a little chaotic in this one in this kind of an ecosystem open source community world relationships really do matter and nurturing them is important the one thing that was also clear is that you really do need someone with domain knowledge about say kubernetes cloud native technology to really understand the relationships because for example someone could have a github repo and be a huge contributor to kubernetes but then there could be some other project like a gaming platform or something that was completely unrelated so if you don't have some domain knowledge um, and understanding of the relationship of the project the data is not going to really help you the other thing that we were really keen to make clear was that there's a new model or a new set of skills required to do this. So we really need to start looking at it from a more scientific data-driven approach. And as Daniel always reminds me, uh, data matters. Clean curated data is really essential in this because you can get to the wrong conclusion or meet the wrong person or promote the wrong uh, person into a leadership position or something of that nature. The other thing that is pretty clear to us is that anonymity is dead. And that might be, again, the more controversial thing we say here is that even though a lot of people have GitHub or Stack Overflow or Slack um, signups that are anonymous or they think are anonymous, it really isn't. We also can see people transitioning from one company to another, so their contribution may have been while they were at Red Hat, and then they now were part of IBM. So we get so there's a lot of pieces and parts to who someone's affiliated with. That's um, a big part of the sorting hat al algorithm plus the curation of the data. Hopefully, you know, beyond just using data analytics, maybe we could just do some predictive analysis in the future. So um, stay tuned for for future efforts around that space too. I think that'll be pretty interesting to, to watch as we continue to um, apply more data analytics and data science to uh, this problem set. Um, we're looking forward to your feedback on the article and your insights um, and other approaches that you may have taken to the same problem. Um, we're looking forward to the Q&A now.